Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. Hello friends, welcome to IntelliGear and this review and history of the Fisher Space Pin. Because that goal and challenge was accepted by Paul Fisher, I hold in my hand the most advanced pin ever used on Earth, or the Moon for that matter. The Space Pin is capable of riding upside down, underwater, in temperatures ranging from 50 below zero to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, at altitudes up to 12,500 feet and even in the weightless environment of space. On top of that, the ink has a 100 year shelf life, and one cartridge lasts three times longer than regular pins. Impressive capabilities to be sure, but what is the technology behind these features, and how did this pin come to be? Join us as we explore the history, science, and mechanics behind the Fisher Space Pin. December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The story begins with World War II and ball bearings. The year is 1942, and America had been at war since December 7, 1941. The switch from factories making peacetime goods to tanks and planes for the war effort was well underway. The Etna ball bearing factory was seriously behind on its production of blade retention bearings, a vital and desperately needed part for airplane propellers. According to Fisher, who worked for Etna as a consultant, airplanes were backed up at the plants waiting for those ball bearings. The Army Air Corps intervened threatening to take over the company if they could not find someone to correct the problem. Paul Fisher was that someone and got production rolling again. This experience would prove vital to Fisher as it gave him the knowledge to produce ball bearings, knowledge he would later call on to produce his pins. It also gave him a reputation as a problem solver. A reputation noticed by entrepreneur Milton Reynolds, who hired Fisher in 1945 as an engineer to help improve the design of a ballpoint pin Reynolds had found. The pin was designed by Laszlo Biro in Argentina. The fountain pin was the writing instrument of the day and was far more difficult to use than Biro's ballpoint pin. Seeing a business opportunity, Milton set about copying the pin so he could market it in the U.S. Upon being asked to improve this pin, Fisher took some home and used them. He returned them a few days later saying, the pins were no good, the basic principle is not sound, and he would have no part in it. One of Fisher's best friends, who also worked for Milton as an engineer, asked him to stay on and help improve the pin. Fisher was able to reduce production costs of the pin, however, the pin was still junk. Milton went ahead and introduced the pin at Gimbel's, according to Fisher. The pin was so bad, people were lined up a block long in the back of the store returning them. But in the front of the store, people were lined up two blocks long buying them. Eventually, the pin's reputation as junk caught up with it, and they couldn't even be sold at cost, and thus they went out of business. Fisher asked Milton's blessing on starting his own pin company. He got the go-ahead and marketed the bullet pin in 48. He also invented the one-for-all refill. These two items put the Fisher Pin Company on the map. The one-for-all refill became an instant hit and dominated the refill market due to the fact that retailers could carry one refill that fit many different models instead of refills for each different brand. Because of this and the other refinements Fisher engineered into his pins such as a better ballpoint, 
and a trap on the end to prevent leaks, NASA approached Fisher in 1965 to develop a pin that could be used in space. Fisher accepted NASA's challenge and designed the AG-7 Zero Gravity Pin, then filed for patent in 1965, thus cornering the space pin market. A wise move since he would need to recoup the millions of dollars invested in research and development. There seems to be some confusion about who contacted who in regards to developing the space pin. Did NASA contact Fisher or did he contact them? NASA's website says Fisher contacted them. However, in an interview of Paul Fisher conducted by Dr. Doug Beck in 2004, Mr. Fisher says that NASA approached him. In an effort to reveal the truth, Intelligear conducted extensive research. It appeared that most articles on the subject referred back to NASA's version of the story. We contacted the Fisher Space Pin Company and spoke with Mr. Steve Nichols, who then confirmed the story with Mr. Kerry Fisher, Paul Fisher's son. The answer back was yes, NASA approached Fisher first. So as far as Intelligear is concerned, we will take the word of two men over that of a giant government agency any day. There is another point of confusion propagated via urban legend that NASA spent millions and in some versions billions to develop the space pin. According to the myth, NASA used the taxpayers' money to develop the pin while the Soviet Union wisely used a pencil. The genesis of this myth most likely came from the cost NASA incurred from the development of a mechanical space pencil. They spent $4,382.50 on 34 of the pencils for a cost of $128.89 per pencil. That's a considerable amount in even today's standards, let alone back in the 60s. Needless to say, when word on this got out, it caused an uproar in the public. In defense of NASA, the cost was very reasonable when you take into account this was the total cost of design, research and development, and the fact that these pencils were made from scratch in a small quantity. It seems like a steep price to the public because it is a commonly known item. However, there was no public outrage over the cost of some other exotic parts NASA developed for space because people were not familiar with them. The Russians, by the way, purchased 100 Fisher space pens and 1,000 ink refills in 1969. NASA took two years testing the AG-7 before accepting 400 units at $6 a piece. Their cautiousness was understandable after the pencil controversy. On October 11, 1968, the AG-7 would be put in space for the first time aboard Apollo 7. And that is the history behind the space pin. We have explored the history that led to the AG-7's first use in space on Apollo 7. But what is the science that made it possible? To understand the space pen, we must first understand how a normal ink pen works. That is to say, what is the science behind it? Well put simply, a normal ink pen relies on gravity to feed the ink into the ball. Have you ever tried to write upside down? If you have, you may have noticed that soon the pen ran out of ink. The same holds true in zero-g environment of outer space. No gravity to feed the ink. Solution? A gas pressurized ink cartridge. Fisher went with nitrogen at 50 psi for its non-flammable inert properties. However, this created a new problem. The ink would leak from the tip. Even though Fisher had pioneered tooling the machines used to perfect the tip of his ballpoint pins and used tungsten carbide balls, the same metal used in modern armor-piercing projectiles with twice the strength of steel, the tolerances were still not tight enough to contain the ink. According to Fisher, the solution came to him in a dream. His father, who had passed on, told him in the dream to use rosin in the ink. So Fisher told his chemist the next day, who had his doubts, but tried it anyways. All types and amounts were tried, none worked. Sometime later, the chemist thought, maybe he meant resin, not rosin. He tried the resin, and it worked. 
The resin turns the ink into a thixotropic, semi-solid gel that only will liquefy when the pinball shears its polymer bonds. They had done it. Some other benefits of this special ink is its ability to write in extreme temperatures, such as those found in space. Also, its long shelf life thanks to being pressurized with a non-oxidizing inert gas. And that is the science behind the space pen. 40 feet down, two and a half, picking up some dust. Straight shadow. Four forward, drift into the right a little. 30 seconds forward. Just... Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. We have explored the history and science behind the space pin. So what's next? That's right, the mechanics. In this diagram, we see the inner workings of the space pin. We see how the pressurized nitrogen acts upon a float ball to push the ink down the barrel and a close-up view of the ball and tip. Now that we have an idea of what's inside, let's take a closer look on the outside. This particular model I am holding is the bullet pin and has been exhibited at the New York Museum of Modern Art as an example of industrial art. It's more widely known as the space pin since Fisher added the space pin cartridge to it and it is their most popular model. The brass casing is coated in chrome and consists of two major parts, the pin housing and cap, which doubles as an extension to make writing easier. It features a spiral cut neural grip to prevent fingers from slipping while writing and an O-ring rubber gasket designed with an expansion gap as seen here to keep the cap in place when not in use. And replacing the ink cartridge is as easy as simply unscrewing the pin housing then removing and replacing the old cartridge with a new cartridge. While this is my favorite Fisher Space Pen, they offer a wide range and style of pens with Space Pen technology, including universal refills for many different brands. You can check them out at www.spacepen.com. Fisher has certainly left his mark. His pins are used worldwide by space explorers circling the globe. His pin was used on the shuttle program and is poised to be used on future NASA missions. So hopefully the next time you use your space pin Remember just how amazing it is, and the amazing man who made it possible.